there's one individual um, that obviously was very close to you and is no longer with us. Um, Kid uh, Yamamoto. Um, let's let's talk a little bit about him because I mean. I mean, the newer generation won't know who he is unless they go look at videos. But I mean, when I started watching UFC and all that, like his name was, and in, in prior to UFC, like his name was massive. He's amazing. He was, he was just like he was like the rock star of MMA at one point, right? Let's let's talk mm-hmm. a little bit about him and his legacy and what he left behind and and um, and his relationship with you because I think it's it's something that uh, people need to hear. Well, for as for, as a martial artist, he was uh, he was. One of those fighters that comes out one in a million, man. He he teaches him something one day, he uses it the next day in sparring. He was so athletic and on the on the mats, he picked up stuff so fast, even in the striking. And his power, he had so much power and speed and agility. And that kid was like pretty much born for martial arts, I felt. Yeah. When did you first meet him? I met him because I started dating his sister. Oh, so you didn't meet him in the gym. You met him after the No, fact. I met him. I met him because I dated his sister, and then his sisters would come down and train with me. And I, I ended up marrying the sister, not yeah. the sister I dated first, but the other sister I met after I got to know the family. It's, it's a real funny story. And you know, it was I knew about him. I knew that was his their brother. Yeah. And I, you know, he was a top wrestler. Yeah. But we used to go and, you know, with, with my girlfriend at the time, you know, we'd watch her brother, you know, go into a wrestling event. So we'd go and cheer for him. I got to meet him just really lightly. And what happened, or big movement happened, was when he was in his uh, college, he got into trouble with the Yakuza. Oh, interesting. He shot a Yakuza. He was, he was just fooling around with his friends with an air pistol. And I guess, I don't know if I was on the ricochet, or maybe he did aim at it at him. I don't know. But what happened was is uh, it hit the Yakuza in the face. The guy chased him down, followed him to his school, went to his dorm. Uh, they chased him out of his apartment. And he had to call me. And he, had, he actually jumped on the second, to- second floor of his apartment. And as he was running away, he called me for help. And I just told him to get to a restaurant where there's a lot of people made some calls and called those guys off. But because of that incident, his college kicked him out of the school. The wrestling association in Japan put him on probation for a year where he couldn't wrestle for a year. And that's when I suggested to him that when your sisters come down to my gym to train, why don't you come down with them and just roll around with the boys? And he did that. And he he fell in love with martial arts, and he said, "I want to do this for a living." And uh, that's what happened. And when when he when re- he was off probation in wrestling, and he was allowed to wrestle again, the father asked me to put him back in wrestling. But you know, I told you know I asked Ken, and I said, "What do you want to do?" He said, "He wants to fight." So I told the father, "I'm not going to force him to wrestle. He wants to fight." And the father totally disowned him. Disowned him, and. He had no money, so I had to support kid. I gave him a car. I, I paid his rent. I, there was one time when I was walking by his apartment that I got for him. I lived next door, and he was sitting in the dark with candles. And I was saying, oh, since when did he get into this spiritual type of stuff? I popped my head in. I said, what are you doing? He goes, oh, his electricity went out. He couldn't pay his electric bill. So I went and paid his electric bill, took care of him, and trained with him. For two years, he moved me every day training. He even came to me with Thailand. Took him all over to train. And, you know, I don't know if you know it, but we actually ended up having a falling out towards the end of his career no. or in the middle of his career. No. It's because uh, after I got him into K1, he won K1. I, you know, I got him into, into all the, the big fighting. When he became a star, guess who comes back into the picture? His father. His father disowned him because he wouldn't wrestle, but you know, he he they wanted me to make him quit fighting, but when he got very famous and the father saw money, the father wanted to come back and start taking over. And that's the problem I had is I you know contracts I made with K1 was an agreement that me and K1 had with him. You know, me, K1, and Kid, we had an agreement. And the father wanted to um um you know break the contract. And because he was a star at the time, when we made the contract, he wasn't a star. It was we made us we made a contract for 
four fights a year at fifty thousand a year. He was fighting in Shuto before he before that he was fighting Shuto for like two grand a fight. Yeah, and I got him contract of fifty thousand dollars a fight for four, so two hundred thousand a year, which is good money back then. Very good money back then, and you know, I actually even was able to talk to the head head K one guy Tanigawa and change the rules for kid. You know, you've never have you ever ever seen in any other K one fight where they're fighting one one round kickboxing and second round they put on MMA goes and fight MMA. I made those rules for kid, and that's when he started winning, and that's when he became a big star. And when he became a big star, all of a sudden the man who disowned him comes out into his life and. Unfortunately, kid didn't have the, the you know the I don't know the the heart enough to tell his dad to hey, step back, man. I'm not going to backstab Ensign. And he decided to go with his father, and that's when I stepped away. No, I never heard that story. Yeah. So, did it was, you guys, I, I, did I, you guys I, connect before his passing or anything or no? Well, what happened with that is yes, I um, would see him at arenas. And the, it, it, we were cordial. I said hi and everything, but I was never a part of anything anymore. And even when he passed away, I didn't know he passed away. I didn't know he had cancer. Yeah, that's sad. I mean, it's sad because yeah, essentially so, you, 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 you gave him that opportunity. You gave him that career. I, I didn't even know the whole story like that, which is pretty crazy that you're the, his introduction and, and his livelihood <laughs> in a way for years getting him into that. That's pretty do you do you still yeah, so, are you, do you still have a relationship or like, are you I'm, are you guys still married or no? You with his sister? No, no. So I divorced his I divorced his sister, and even the divorce didn't affect our friendship. Okay. Even after the divorce, he was really close to me. Yeah. But it was that the money thing that the father started coming out for the money, and I didn't take any any money from kid at all. Money, money, and the, the father money, wanted to take money. A, is the, money is the root to all evil. Oh yeah, money can destroy things. Yeah, so. You know, it, it ended up where I pulled away from kid and it came to a point where I don't know what happened, you know, what type of talks happened. But as far as I'm concerned, every time we saw I saw him in the arena, we said hi. But for some reason, they kept it a secret for me that he was dying of cancer. And, you know, if I never got to say my goodbyes to him, I would have resented the whole family for the rest of my life or, or even not just the whole family. I would have resented the people that knew that hid it from me. And some of my close friends knew that he was dying and didn't because they didn't want me to know they decided to keep it a secret and show their loyalty to them instead and i was lucky that you know the the universe took care of me and it was just this, this weird situation that happened where i knew someone that knew where he was and i got to get a letter to him I had that person write a letter for me and the person wrote the letter and I told, you know, the letter pretty much said that, hey, um, I know what's happening. You've always been a little brother to me. And I just want to tell you that, you know, I really care about you and I wish you the best. And the, the person who gave him the letter told me that when he read it, he cried. And in a way, although I couldn't see him face to face, that was my closure. I was gonna say I, I could say my form. goodbyes to him. Yeah, to give you some form In, of closure. Yeah, and you know, even when he passed, I didn't. I heard. I found out like everyone else in the news when he passed. Yeah, he was way too young, too. Way, way, way too young. Yeah, it was one of those things that the, you know, when the the God takes the the great ones up earlier. Yeah. yeah. Elvis Presley died young. Yeah. Bruce Lee died young. You know. Yeah. way yeah. too young kid yeah way too young way too young and, and and a guy like that if he was fighting in the ufc at this time with with social media uh, he would have been massive name massive name at yeah, his peak oh it was just his his look his star he had a star power right which is very it's like the conor mcgregor almost i mean he could have been yeah he massive, was exciting he was star. powerful he he had this great personality so he was a, he was a good kid he had a great, lovable personality.